So the first thing I'm going to do is dip into some white with this regular house looking brush and I'm going to do some crisscrosses right here in the center and then I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow and I'm going to go around that in a circle. Just lightly, just with the very edges. I'm going to grab some more yellow. we're going to have a path that's going to be lit up by this in a way coming straight for us All right now add just a little bit of water just to the ends grab a little yellow a little blue just a little touch of blue not a whole lot we want like a soft green. See there I grabbed too much so I'm going to have to get more yellow but that's okay. And just a touch of white. Maybe a little more. There we go. That's basically what I want. And just very softly leave some of that yellow Just with the very edges, just sweep it across the canvas. You can do circular motions if you prefer. I'm going to grab some white and just slightly, just like that, sweep it across broader strokes as I get closer. Grab some more white. Right in there. Out towards you. Sweep them wider. There we go. You see? Now do you see sort, sort of your path already forming? Now with that green, we're going to darken it up a little bit and add a little more blue. Now whatever type of green it is that you're creating, it's up to you. For mine, that's a little too bright. I'm going to dull it a little bit by adding green's complement red. Just a little bit, a touch will do. And if you do that, you'll notice that it almost neutralizes the green a little bit. Now we're going to go around this green, soft strokes. I'm going to leave this section just like that for now. We're going to leave those sweeps across it. We're not going to cover it. We're just going to skip it all together and just come over here with our green. Now, with, these, with this addition of the darker green, we're starting to see our path form, aren't we? You see, look, it looks like there's something back there even, right? Once you've got that covered, we're going to get a little more blue. Grab some more yellow. We want to do a darker green. Whoop, that's way too much sand. And grab more yellow. Neutralize with just a touch of red. There we go. And I'm not adding any white, really. I'm going to tap some out, because there's a lot of paint in there. I'm going to tap some of that color out. And this is quite br uh, darker than the rest, so I'm going to sweep ever so gently, holding back further. Just very gently going around. I'm not worried about any spaces I might leave. That's okay. This is helping frame our scene. So eventually our darkest concentration is going to be around, around us. 
This is what your eyes are seeing. I'm come forward over here a little bit onto our path, just a touch. Randomly coming up a little. There's bushes there, branches, trees. Just lightly, I don't want to cover everything, and I'm just tapping. Just tapping. Can you hear that? that happens where you go into your path that's okay just gently sweep it across a little bit and it's just a shadow that's all it is I'm gonna do some shadows anyway there we go and sweep a little bit across over here since it's closest to us it's darker Anything that comes to a chisel edge is fine. I just like to use this one because it's so small and the lines I'm going to draw are really small, or paint rather, are going to be really small. So it's easier, right? So why not? So I'm just going to pick somewhere and I'm just going to tap like that. And that came out a little too thick for me, but that's okay. I'm going to drag it up. And that's all. Just a small indication of maybe a tree, the limb of a tree, whatever is back there. Just a little bit, just barely small, thin, long strokes. Even if you don't see it, put it there with your imagination. Why not? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You can barely see them but they're there. Very light. It's very lightly. Now we're going to go into the mixture we created and add just a little more yellow. I'm going to use some of the GAC 100 too, actually. A little more yellow. Do you see that? Those are maybe a little bit closer. And I'm following along this path here that we created. This is what we're going into on the sides of this path here. And some of the paint dries and you have to drag it. That's okay because gives it more character. So I'm just drawing very thin lines up, letting the paint drag. Not really worried about it. Who knows how tall those trees back there are. Here into the yellow. Just barely see that, but you know that they're there in your forest. So we're going to grab more yellow, darken it up just a little more. Just a few of these, not many. I mean, these are really tall trees, and I'm just dragging the paint across the canvas. It's not too runny, it's not very thick. It's just enough that it's letting me drag. Maybe there's a branch that comes this way here. The further away they are, the smaller. There's one tucked away back here, maybe. At least in mine there is, I don't know about yours. There we go. There's one back there. I love it. Alright. So 
and now we're going to go even darker and I'm going to add a touch of red that's too much red of course I do it on purpose of course I do and a little bit of yellow I mean blue excuse me that's kind of how I want it now these are going to be closer to us not even sure if this color is going to work. Yeah, it works. That's fine. There's a tree right here. And when I get towards the top, I'm just swooping up. Just letting the brush come off the canvas. Like it's skating and coming up, just like that. And dragging the paint. And from about here on the trunk, to swoop out. We just made it appear like with the way it swoops and drags that there's light shining down on part of that branch there. Right? Can you see that? and it's just dark enough to where we know it's still further into the forest it's not that close to us yet but it's still closer than what we see back here painting is just an optical illusion you guys we're making 2D somewhat appear 3D to the best of our abilities and anyone can do that trust me. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm dragging it up and letting it disappear. I'm going to give it a little branch. I have a pattern. I need to break it. You see, I like to do that stuff in threes and that's obvious right there but that's okay I'll keep messing with it then maybe there's another one I'm gonna start this one from the top and come down like that there's another one I made it I started off very softly press down harder and then let go again and let it disappear into the darker green it's another tree it's another trunk and that one I'm dragging here too and dragging there See, we're not doing anything crazy. I'm just gonna give it give it some branches coming this way. I'm just dragging the paint, suggesting what's happening. Can you see that? Does that make sense? Am I explaining that good enough? Now, please do let me know because I, I do care about how I teach. It's important to me. Certain things are, are difficult to explain because they just come to you with time give yourself time be patient with yourself all right talent is such a myth it's not about talent it's about a desire to do it y'all seriously it's that's all it is I'm trying to get like a green kind of brown thing going so I mix the three primaries together just a little heavier on the yellow and I'm teaching you, teaching this to you this way because I want you to think for yourself. I don't, I don't want you to just follow along to what's ha to, you know, what's going on in the painting. I also want you to learn yourself because I'm self-taught. I didn't go to school to learn to paint. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> I wish. You know, it's just been practiced through the years, and it's such a good time. Like me with my ADD are you kidding me I probably would have failed anyway <laughs> but okay so I've got just this darker green now and I'm gonna do the same thing well brownish green and these these are gonna be closer for my first one I don't know maybe it's should I do it straight maybe it's straight there we go and it's just gonna disappear and I started the line off too tough up there so I'm gonna soften I'm just gonna drag down just drag down I'm gonna make it a little 
thicker and I'm just dragging down and I'm suggesting this trunk over here and this trunk is gonna have a branch coming out this way look I gave it a little knuckle already and I'm dragging up that way and then you know what maybe there's another one this way It was just a little up. I have very little paint on my brush. I'm basically dry brushing in a sense. I really enjoy dry brushing for certain te techniques. It's not very recommended. Now with the very, I had extra paint on my brush so I smushed it down a little bit where I know I'm going to want things to be dark anyway kind of just a, something that I do without even realizing sometimes. There we go. And then I'm using that to form the trunk and the tree and give it a little more depth. There's some darker spots. Now if there's something that appears that you like, leave it. Don't overwork it. That's something I have trouble with very often don't overwork it. If you see something like that little knuckle, I didn't want to do that. That sort of just happened, but I like it. So when that happens, leave it alone. I'm going to do a couple of those on this side. I'm just going to swoop and let it go back here into the bushes. It goes that way. And I'm pulling out a branch here. Using the paint that's already on my brush. I'm trying to get rid of it. It's being covered there by some leaves. What do you guys think? What's going through your minds? What do you think so far? I'm going to make a little more of this greenish brown type of mixture over here. You see how I don't even really give them names? It's just the color that I want them to be. It's just the colors you want them to be. And that's it. Don't overthink it. Just what's further away is lighter. What's closer to you has more detail and more color. So that's you know, use that to start as the only thing you're going to deal with, okay? That one's kind of just coming out there. I like that. What do you guys think? It's just like, oh, I'm going to be different. I'm going to stick out a little more. I need more sunlight. I'm just dragging it across the canvas. That's it. Pretty cool, huh? Now we're going to get darker. This is a little long already. I don't know, guys. I think I'm going to leave it. I don't... I don't really care actually I'm having a lot of fun with you guys right now and if you watch it and you know I'm chilled out you know what's up <laughs> oh my friends I love you I had such a good time seeing you guys alright so now I'm going to go a little darker than this and, and this is starting to get too small like me thinks so I'm going to rinse it off not leave it in my paint water and put it off to the side I'm going to grab my what is this? Robert Simmons Sapphire Angle Shader, 3 8 inch. I torture my brushes. I treat my brushes so bad. I need to get better at that. Some I've got some blue into where I was mixing before with that yellow. And I'm going to grab more yellow. And that's too much of a fake green, so how do you dull it? You add its complement, which is red. We've got a green now, but we want a brown, so I'm going to add more red, and that gives us a nice warm brown that might work, but I still want to dull it a little. It's almost purpley, so I'm going to add yellow, which is the complement to purple. Do you see what I did there? So, that might be the color that I want. Where do I want my closest tree? Is 
that's where it's gonna be, right there. I'm gonna make her a little preggers there, just make the belly stick out a little. And now I didn't use a lot of paint, so I'm just forming her with the paint that's coming off my brush, and I'm just gonna drag it up. let it go. I'm just flicking right now. And I'm dragging from a part here. I'm giving it a little branch and I'm just letting it come off my brush just in that same line like a branch. It's hazy, it's impressionistic, it's not meant to be perfect. I'm gonna fill this out a little bit down here. There we go. Now can you get a sense, a better sense now of the depth of this forest? Can you see it forming? I'm gonna get some more of that mixture. And I'm gonna make another tree closer to us, but I don't think I have enough paint. I'm gonna grab some blue. That was almost too much, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab some red. That's almost too much, but that's okay. Now we've got a purple, we wanna dull it. So what did we do before? We got some yellow. Because purple and yellow are each other's complement. They dull each other when we mix them. All right, there we've got a nice deep color. Where do we want this one to go? Is it gonna... Maybe it kind of comes in front of us. It starts off thin and then... We'll go that way. Just taking from there and I'm letting using just the edge and I'm letting this form its own little branch all by itself I'm just dragging the paint out dragging it across the canvas letting it just basically rub off <laughs> and it's coming up this way in front of the other tree and I'm letting it disappear up there somewhere. Doesn't that look cool? I'm gonna fill this in a little bit because that tree looks like it's about to fall. Now do you see how the form of this tree is almost calling you in to the forest? Like, this is the journey you're about to go on. Enjoy. Pretty cool, huh? Now, if you've got some paint left on your brush, ever so gently, give it another branch that maybe looks like it's going up in there somewhere. So we're just going to drag. What do you guys think so far? Am I crazy? Does this look horrible? Tell me. You gotta you gotta be honest with me. You gotta tell me what's up. Okay. Maybe there's one over here. Maybe this is part of a bigger tree. That comes that way. Who knows? I don't know. I mean you're in that forest, not me. <laughs> I'm just making it for you. That's all I'm doing. It's just your imagination, honestly. And maybe we've got something over here. Just out of nowhere, just because. Maybe there's a tree over there. It's out of our line of vision. Okay, so now we're going to do like our front foil fo foliage. Foliage. For that, we're going to need our scruffy brush whatever kind of brush that you have with these crazy bristles and we're gonna get 
you might need more some yellow here I'll do it over over here can wonder if you can see that some yellow and some blue and a little just a little red but we're gonna concentrate on the blue and yellow because that makes green now did this work for us I'm gonna start here and I'm just lightly tapping this is kind of an in-between color for the ones we've already got here so keep that in mind when you're uh, picking out your color for these first suggestions of leaves just going all around very lightly toward the middle changed brushes because the scruffy brush wasn't working for me I've got this middle color and I'm just dabbing not concentrating too much um, towards this middle because it's bright just very lightly around there and as it comes closer to us you know I'll let some stragglers you know like that maybe like that I'm just pouncing a little bit just for those su the suggestion of it there we go not going too crazy and then I'm gonna darken up the color now this brush won't work for that because it's too soft I think I'm gonna use a you know what I'm gonna switch to a filbert because filberts are my friends so I've got some of this yellow, some blue, a little red to dull it, but we're concentrating on the yellow and blue for our green. Okay, this should be a little darker, and I'm just going to start tapping. Come down here onto our path make some more green. We've got blue, we've got yellow, a little red to soften it. And if you don't feel like your green is just quite dark enough, add just a touch of red. You'll know, because you'll see it stays a green and right around the very edges just go darker over across the top just very lightly just go darker and let the paint trail off Now while we wait for all that stuff for our flowers there to chill out, with your filbert brush, I want you to make a mixture with your white and black, a very light gray. So use mainly white first, just a very small smidge of black, and mix it together until you have a very light gray, almost as if it's just a couple of values darker than white. Now with that filbert brush, our path right around here somewhere right right in there so just with the edge it doesn't matter if it doesn't show in your mind's eye it's there just with the very edge we're gonna create that very distant rock okay that's the edge of the rock the first one that's in in a little bit of shadow now just underneath it another one. It looks like a little blob, right? That's okay. A little further down, just a little bit longer. Drag it across just a bit. Like that. Let the paint drag off the brush. Don't push it too much. Let it just drag. And as you get closer, they get bigger. Okay. See now how it's kind of giving the impression that we're coming from around the bend, just from that little nuance right here. 
and your black and white just a little bit darker now and just a light tap between those first two that you made that look like little blobs now just a light tap and then drag it over a little bit I'm gonna have to fix that and over here too let me just add another one all right now for that first rock that's a little closer to you just a little bit just that little smidge right there that you see a little bit more on this one and I'm doing it to what's the bottom half of each little oval that you made so that you're still leaving some of that lighter shade at the top of it what's closer to the light is going to be lighter but to you it's the bottom half you see or the bottom quarter whatever because that's where our light is coming from you can't really appreciate it yet but you'll see the same thing here and here and I'm letting the paint drag because they're rocks now for the furthest one, I'm already going to start darker because it's closest to us. I'm even going to add a little tiny hint of brown to it. And I'm going to sweep it right across here. And I'm going to keep that turn going. I'm going to drag it across and I'm going to let the paint come off. not getting any more paint I'm just using what's already on my brush okay in reality what we've got in front of us are a ton of mid-tones a light source and not much darkness let's start with our darks first and get that out of the way so let's create what's closest to us down here and around and I'm going to grab a little black, which I don't really like using for this, but for the sake of time. So I'm adding some yellow to that black. It creates a very interesting green, a very beautiful green that I'm going to add a little bit of red to. And I learned that mixture through Jane. I've learned a lot through her. She's an excellent teacher. And just tapping along the top, any which direction. I'm just filling things up back here. These are bushes. We're going to add some other neat stuff too. And just a little bit up here because I want us to keep that light in the center. And just around here, going a little into there too. Just very lightly. I'm just moving the brush around any which way. This is the forest. Who knows what's back there? And I'm bringing it down here. Cover this up over here too with some bushes. Some of our shadow, just a little bit. It's really just dashes and marks that's creating our landscape here. I'm bringing it, I'm gonna bring it into here a little bit. It's a little bit back there, just very lightly. It almost looks misty, right? Neat. Okay, now with our thin brush, I'm going to water a little bit of our paint down, that same dark mixture. I'm going to add a little bit of the brown that I had. And I want something that can almost skate across the canvas. And just from within here, just I'm letting it fade up here very lightly. It's impressionistic. It's not meant to be real. I'm going to rinse off a little bit, grab some more, and do the same thing on the other side. It's very impressionistic. The majority of this will be in your imagination. That's the best best way for it to be, isn't it? Because these are really just lines and dashes on a piece of paper. 
and you've created a nice world that you can escape to whenever you want. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. I think it looks better on screen than it does in person, actually. Alright, now we're going to add some highlights. With that same brush, rinse it off real well. And we're going to make a mixture with our white, some yellow, get pure yellow, nothing contaminated with another color, okay? I'm going to add a little dot of blue. That was literally a dot. And I'm going to add a little bit of flow improver, the GAC 100 or floating medium, whatever. And we're going to start adding some highlights on stuff. Okay, we don't really need any back there. But on these trunks up here, let's see, just lightly, just to start very soft across one edge so you still see some of the other side of the trunk. Just barely. We're going to make it lighter, but for now that's what we're going to do. Same thing over here. I'm not starting right at the very top. Some of that's behind this tree and I want it to show a little more. And then as it comes away from the light, go. this one's definitely going to have some across here on its little elbow. Just a little. I put too much. I'm just going to smudge it off a bit. There we go. And then up here too, maybe here, up there, oops, there we go, and then we definitely have some here, but we're going to start off light. doing it across actually and I'm going to smudge it that's too much paint I'm going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to work that out Okay, it happens. I'm going to want to darken that a little bit. So let me do that real quick. That's too much light. I'm still just going to tap it because this is an opportunity to give this trunk a funkier shape too. off my brush. I'll just go back into that mixture. And the light is hitting it over here. I'm going to soften that edge and it disappears behind the bushes back there. I'm going to rinse off my brush. go into some white with just the tiniest little hint of yellow. And just in certain spots. I'm going to smudge it a little. See what I'm doing? I'm just 
lightening up the spots that the light might be hitting. Might be. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm just saying. And I'll smudge certain areas. Back here, of course. Just a little. Not much. I'm going to dab back here. I'm tapping across and lighten that because I know it was too dark. Just a little. Some white there. Here. Here. I'm letting the paint drag across and leave like those smudges of white. It gives shape to our rocks. Smudging across. And here, it's bigger as we get closer. Looks like a footstep. And here, too. here. Just a little bit in between the rocks. And lighter as we go further, closer to our light source. This is all kind of hazy over here, you know, we don't know exactly where that's taking us. Do we? But we want to find out, don't we? It looks beautiful. I'm going to make this just a little bit darker here. touches of light at the top and then we're done at least I am <laughs> you can keep going of course Just tapping over them. We've got little speckles of light there.
these are just dots and dashes on a canvas that look like a forest. That's all they are. And I think I'm gonna darken down here a little bit. Bring this closer to us. Well, there you have it, our nice simple little forest scape. Who knows where that's going to take you to, wherever you want. Feel free to tweak this however you like, but this was quite an adventure, lots of fun. Took a little longer than I expected, but that's alright, it was worth it. Thank you guys again for joining me today. I hope that was um, a nice lesson for you in how just learning how to do some lines, dots, and dashes can create a very interesting display for you. I hope you have a great day and until next time, keep painting.